Bach and Bolton's list of consistency heuristics is one structure that many people find useful. There's another structure that's been in the works for about 14 years. It comes from Doug Hoffman. He publishes ideas about how to compare and evaluate oracles in a set of tables. I can't walk through all the details in these tables in a lecture. There's just too much here. This is something you have to read through on your own. But I can make some comments as we go. Doug's fundamental insight was that all oracles are heuristic. Testing provides partial answers that might be useful rather than evaluations that are always complete and correct. Constraint testing illustrates the idea of the partial oracle. It might be too hard to tell whether an answer is right or wrong, but easy to tell whether it's plausible or impossible. If the program tells us that an American postal code has six digits, it's wrong. If it tells us a Canadian postal code has only numbers, no letters, it's wrong. It doesn't matter what the exact code is, it's wrong. These types of tests don't ever confirm that the program works. They only make some types of errors obvious. A regression test is a repeat. We ran the test in a previous build of the program, now we're running it again. If the program passed the test the last time, we can capture its output and compare the old output with the new output. If the output is different this time, mm, maybe the new output is wrong or perhaps the old output is outdated. Regression test oracles are very common. Some people use these as the basis for all of their test automation. But I keep meeting people who tell me about their projects and how 90% or more of the mismatches that they found between the current version's output and the regression test output were not bugs at all. Some tell me that most of their test time is spent updating these old tests over and over as the program changes. I've personally seen this waste at some large companies. Yes, the execution of these tests has been automated. But the manual labor associated with updating these tests over and over and over again is huge, mindless, not automated, and not productive. It finds almost no bugs, and it gives us little real assurance that new bugs aren't there. The next several oracles are based on models. A model is a simplified representation of a system, usually one that makes some aspect of the system easier to notice. We can build models of almost anything. Think of someone selling an insurance policy. They use a program to help understand the customer's needs. From that, they determine the price for the policy. That program implements a model of the sales process. The program makes features available, the features the software designers believed would be important at this point in the sales discussion. The model is the designer's model. The program asks questions to get the information that the designers thought would be relevant. It doesn't ask questions about information the designers considered irrelevant. Now, to the extent that the software helps the salesperson get the right information quickly and sell the right policy, good model. But to the extent that the salesperson has to work around the software or feels that he's being asked the wrong questions or in the wrong order or in a confusing way, the software's model is wrong. An oracle can implement a different model and check whether the program is consistent or inconsistent with the viewpoint built into the oracle. In designing an oracle, the tester can use whatever information she considers relevant. The goal of creating a model as a tester is not necessarily to prove software right or wrong. The goal is often to develop a better understanding of the software and a set of launching points for further investigation, sometimes resulting in bug reports and sometimes resulting in reinforcement of the oracle's models. The next three slides look at widely used models that we can test against. For example, with the state model. If we know what state the program is in, we know what it can do next and what it can't. In a presentation to the workshop on model-based testing, James Tierney and Harry Robinson described Microsoft's experience with state models. In many cases, they said, the most valuable information came while they were exploring the program to build the model. They found many inconsistencies that made the model much harder to create and to understand. These obviously also made the program harder for users to understand. When the program is much more complex than the simplified representation in the model, sometimes the fix is to make the program simpler instead of making the model more complex. Some models that we build into an oracle might have nothing to do with the software, except that the software is wrong if it doesn't conform to their predictions. For example, if the software gives a calculated result that would violate the laws of gravity, that's a bug. Statistical models are interesting because they let us work with output that could be correct but is so improbable as to be suspicious. Finally, we have the human. You is the oracle. Your intuition about whether the program's behavior is appropriate is imperfect, but you can detect oddities that no one ever considered programming into automated oracles. You have insight into what is confusing, what is insulting, and what is unhelpful. Recognition of these problems is too complex for a test machine. 
So let's sum up on the oracles and then close on a quick note about the exam. Sometimes a program behaves in a way that is obviously wrong. In these cases, if we can notice the behavior and recognize the error, we can report it without ever having to spend much time thinking about it. But other times, the failure is harder to spot, harder to recognize, or harder to explain. If we think of oracles as hard and fast rules, if we think of all testing as evaluation of the program against hard and fast rules, we'll miss a lot of these harder problems. Treating oracles as heuristics gives us more freedom to think about partial answers. It lets us think about results that are suspicious or unlikely rather than necessarily wrong. It helps us think about design choices that might be problematic even if they were put into the code intentionally. Now about that exam. These videos are used in a lot of different courses. I can only talk about the ones I'm personally involved in. In those we have a study guide. We publish it. It includes every question you can be asked on the exam. We also include links to a paper that offers heuristics for answering essay exam questions well, and two videos with examples of how we do our grading. If your course uses a study guide based exam structure, it probably includes a discussion forum where students can post draft answers and critique each other's drafts. I strongly suggest that you draft your own answer first and then compare notes with the other answers. Unlike multiple choice tests, in essay questions, you can tell us that you disagree with the lectures and offer your own point of view as an alternative. In the study guide forum, you'll see a lot of different points of view. But students who wait until a few days before the exam to start working through these questions, they lose most of the educational benefit of the study guide based exam structure. The essay questions provide a good review of the material while you're learning it. They get you thinking about the lecture in a different way. This is the value of this approach. Don't put it off.